Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here uh, uh, to share my insights as a as an African and also as a journalist working for China Global Television Network. Um, let me start by first saying that uh, the two sessions um, uh, is, 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 is a very important uh, political event, a very important annual political event in China. Uh, and uh, it attracts a lot of interest uh, globally, including in Africa. Uh, many Africans uh, are interested in knowing what is going on in China because over the last uh, two decades, uh, to be precise, I think uh, relations between China and Africa have grown exponentially. Um, um, China has deepened uh, not just bilateral ties with individual African countries, but also with the African continent in general. Um, so then, therefore, what goes in China, goes on in China is of of interest to many Africans and African countries. Um, so that is the context in which many Africans today view. And I can tell you that uh, um, Africa today knows more about China uh, because of the Chinese media uh, that operate in Africa, and Africans now understand China more. Uh, than they used to previously. There was a lot of misunderstanding uh, uh, previously. Um, so then therefore, these two sessions is an event that attracts a lot of interest across Africa. Uh, sorry, the government report, uh, I think, highlights both what China did last year and what China plans to do in the new year, 2024. Uh, last year was particularly difficult, the progress. The global economic environment was generally difficult. And many countries, and countries not just in Africa, I think globally, have struggled to recover post-COVID. Um, so post-COVID recovery has been very slow. And uh, in China in particular, then therefore, the achievements of last year, which saw China, in spite of the difficult global economic environment, make a lot of progress economically, is something to single out and 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 acknowledge and 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 appreciate China about that it could still make uh, reasonable economic uh, progress in spite of the difficult uh, environment uh, uh, globally, uh, and this is particularly important for Africa because of the ties between economic ties between China and Africa, particularly in the area of trade. Um, so then, therefore, when the Chinese economy does well, when the Chinese economy grows, then therefore the prospects and the benefits for uh, partnerships with Africa uh, are, 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 are very visible. Um, so the area of economic growth is one that I can single out, particularly in the, in the year ending 2023, that China made a lot of progress in. I think the projection of 5% growth is, is, is impressive in my view, um, because still um, the global economic environment is difficult. Um, so it's an impressive projection and it's a projection that gives a lot of hope um, 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 to Africa. Um, just, just like I've already indicated, uh, because of the economic ties between China and many African countries, if China's economy slows down, then uh, there are problems for African economies because this, this, these two economies are now intertwined. And if the Chinese uh, economy grows and, and there are good prospects, then it offers a lot of optimism uh, for African countries, particularly in the area of trade. And it is also interesting to note that uh, it's not just trade. It's not just trade because China's engagement with, with, with Africa is quite expansive. It goes, it, it's broad in, in many areas, uh, particularly in infrastructure development. Uh, we have also uh, China's uh, engagement in areas of agriculture, in areas of technology. Um, so then, therefore, when the Chinese economy is upbeat, uh, we see we see movement, we see progress in these sectors, sectors in the agricultural sector, in the IT sector, um, um, and so on. Uh, so then, therefore, um, it is a sign uh, of optimism for Africa. Uh, I, I think while China has uh, has uh, uh, an Africa policy, uh, and China is very clear about. Uh, 
how it engages uh, with Africa. And we have uh, mechanisms, say like the FOCAC, uh, which China uses to, 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 to streamline, and it's very clear um, to streamline its engagement with Africa. Um, it doesn't seem to us in Africa that the US has a very clear Africa policy. Instead, what we have seen in, uh, in, uh, in recent years, particularly in the last three, four years, is a policy to counter China in Africa. That is what we are seeing as Africans, as the US policy in Africa, countering China. And, and for us Africans, that is not very beneficial. And, uh, and the US policy in particular, particularly last year, it was very evident how the US is trying to create a divide. You know, it's trying to bring back an old era uh, of the East and West divide. For example, there was a law uh, that actually failed in the US Congress uh, that was targeting Russia uh, in, 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 in Africa. So that law, which failed, as I've already said, in the US Congress, uh, was aimed at punishing African countries that have any kind of cooperation, uh, say with Russia, whether it's trade, cooperation, or any other economic engagements with Russia. Um, so, so, so what we see is, is, is a punitive uh, American policy in Africa that targets China and then therefore by extension targets Africans. Uh, the, the more recent one actually is, uh, is, uh, is a law which is still in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the US Congress uh, brought about by, brought by two US congressmen targeting South Africa uh, because South Africa took uh, uh, Israel to the International Court of Justice over the Israel-Gaza war. Uh, South Africa, having suffered apartheid, uh, is very unhappy with what is going on in, in Gaza uh, because then therefore in South Africa's estimation and of course in the understanding of many Africans, there's nothing different uh, from apartheid by the Israelis in Palestine that we are witnessing. So again, the US is trying to pass a law in its Congress to, to review bilateral relations in, uh, with South Africa. And uh, I think when the US targets South Africa or targets any other African country for that matter, then the US generally targets Africans. Um, so, so you can clearly see um, these policies in the last year um, um, against Russia, uh, this year against South Africa, um, but we do not see uh, a clear policy of US-Africa engagement. In fact, even if you look at mechanisms like AGOA, uh, which is a trade platform uh, between the US and African countries, it's, uh, it's very discriminative. And the US sometimes uses it to single out and punish countries that don't agree with it in some areas. You know, um, so I can say that while China is very clear uh, with uh, in its engagement with Africa and the evidence of China's engagement with Africa is very clear all across the continent, whether they are rails, whether they are ports, whether they are roads, whether they are airports. And we see more and more Chinese involvement in the, in the, in the health sector. We see Chinese involvement in the agricultural sector. Uh, we see Chinese, we see growing Chinese foreign direct investment in Africa. We see very little uh, from the US in Africa. And as an African, I think it would be more, it would be more beneficial if US engage with African countries in a more constructive way that then develops and uplifts Africans. Uh, because I think the number of African countries that have signed on on the BRI initiative have grown. I think now we are past 30 countries. We are heading 40 countries. Uh, and you know, Africa is a country of 55, uh, uh, 54, you know, uh, 54 uh, countries. Uh, and then therefore a majority of African countries have appended their signature on the BRI. And why is the BRI important? Uh, particularly as we speak now, I think the BRI is increasingly important to Africa because Africa now has a common continental trading block called the Africa uh, uh, Continental Free Trade Area. 
And uh, for, for this initiative, for this venture, this African Union idea uh, to succeed, uh, the, the, the underlying, the foundation, uh, the important thing that must happen is infrastructure development because for trade to happen, for goods and services to move around the continent, for labor, for capital uh, to move from one country to another, to cross regions, to cross borders, we need infrastructure. We need railway lines, we need airports, uh, we need good regional, not just national, but regional roads. And this is really, really pivotal because this is where now BRI is playing a very instrumental role in generally uplifting Africa. Because once through BRI, Africa will achieve its goals of developing its, its infrastructure, which is key to the success of the Africa continental free trade area.